Hi guys! Hello! I hope you're doing great today. I hope you had a fine weekend and you are ready to get your week started. Before I do anything else, I just want to take the time to say thank you guys so much. Thanks for subscribing, liking, sharing and commenting because that is helping the channel to grow and I appreciate it immensely. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead, just hit that subscription button and subscribe. Now I am in the garden and in this video, what I want to do is share two tips with you that can help you to save when it comes on to your planters and hanging baskets around your home and garden now what i'll do is take you through my garden and show you some planters that i have with plants in them mark my planters got started very late because i had so much i was doing we we're doing garden expansion i had to do like all the um de-weeding and everything in the garden and so maybe just maybe i had a little bit too much to do but next year for sure i know it will be different because some of the things that i had to do this year like taking care of that um additional garden bed which we just started this year and this spot here that i'm also taking care of it's a new bed i won't have those to next year so I know that it will be remarkably different as I was saying my planters got started late but I think they're still looking pretty good so I'll show them to you and then I will give you two um, tricks that I use in order to save myself money and ultimately some time because who has a budget every year to buy annuals not this girl so let me show you the planters now so let's start on the deck i have um three planters on the deck that i want to show you and uh, um the three of them have similar items in them but some are ahead of the others this one here has royal carpet alyssum and uh, it has a couple of African marigold that haven't started blooming yet and also French marigold there. I am actually looking forward to the African marigold when they start blooming because they're real pretty and they will create that contrast with the white um, alyssum and uh, they also create the height in the middle of the pot in this planter i also have some white royal carpet alyssum and uh, african marigolds and some pretty johnny jump ups right here I'll take you closer and show you the Johnny Jump Ups. These are the Johnny Jump Ups. I have more in another pot, so you will see them more distinctly. The African um, marigold here have actually started blooming. This one hasn't started yet, but you can see what I'm saying in that the marigold actually creates some height in the middle. They have a thing where they say when you're doing a planter, you need a thriller, which is the one that's taller, a filler, which is around the thriller, and then a spiller that spills over the edge of the planter. Well, my alyssum here is spilling a bit right now, <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Don't live by that principle. I just do what I think looks good, right? And you can do the same. Over here is another pot that has, it's a pedestal pot, that has the royal carpet alyssum 
and the African marigold in the middle haven't really started blooming yet but I'm looking forward to that something to look forward to right and the alyssum right here is contrasting so nicely with the bee balm that the bees love so much so here I have another planter and this planter has the um, royal alyssum white alyssum um, as the spiller and it has African marigold in the center which will be getting taller and more colorful so it creates that nice contrast between the white alyssum and the champagne blooms of the African marigold. I also have one across the way there that is pretty similar to this one. Now I ended up with a tomato plant in the middle here <laughs> that is growing because when I see that the marigolds um, it actually hitchhiked and so I just let it be so I'll see where it goes <laughs> The last two planters I'm showing you guys are at the entrance of the property. Now it's the half barrel. There's one here and there's one behind me across the way. Now I have some Johnny jump ups in this planter and I have a Diplodania behind them. Now the Diplodania is supposed to grow um, 12 to 24 inches. It didn't grow that high but <laughs> the Johnny jump ups have actually jumped so high. Last year I plant, planted them, they probably grew about six to eight inches. This year they are way high, up to about 10 to 12 inches. So they are a bit higher than the Diplodania. It doesn't so show as much as I intended it to show, but I figure, you know what? It's a bit offset. The Johnny Jump Ups are kind of to one side and I figure, okay, maybe I'll get some more growth out of this Diplodania. So I'm not going to bother with moving anything. I'm just going to let them be. And then I got this millet plant at the local um, farmers market so it's in the back it creates that height in the back against this trellis which i have put just to help to um, support it as well as to add another dimension to the plant that's it for the plant now what are the ways in which you can save on your planter, save money that is, and even some time on the planters throughout your garden. Number one, what I did last year after the Johnny Jump Pops were finished blooming and they went to seed, I didn't pull them and toss them. What I did instead of tossing them is to crumble in the fall I crumbled the whole thing up and I put them in the pot and then I did my Christmas decorations over them so that is one way you can um, have your planter started early because what happens is when you put the whole thing in the seeds will fall into the soil and when the soil gets warm enough in the spring they will start protein so that way you get a head start right and you don't have to spend any money you're reusing the seeds from the year before unless of course you want a different look right and if you want a different look you could actually choose the alyssum for example crumble them up in the um pot and leave them there the same thing will happen in the spring they will spring forth and they will get an early start so that's one way to save on your annuals 
another way is look for your plant sales now I got this for half price I think I paid about six bucks for it usually it's 12 to 15 bucks right so I got it up at half price that's one way I save my planter got um, it got planted in here a little later but it was like shortly after the summer started because we get started earlier than summer summer doesn't really start until June 21st right and so if I can get this June 30th or even the first week of July then the Johnny Jump Pops will carry the show and then I'll get this in and it'll last me for the rest of July, August, September, October and what I'll do with this diplodania is I'll remove it from the half barrel and I will put it in a pot, take it inside and overwinter it. So that is another way you can save on your annuals. Another way to save is to shop your local horticultural sales or farmers market sales because they do have good prices. Now I said I was going to tell you two ways. Uh, there are maybe about three, four, five ways that you can save. The more the merrier, right? Because everything counts. We are back to the planter with the royal carpet alyssum. As for the royal carpet alyssum, what I do, just like the Johnny Jump Pops, is sprinkle the seeds in place in late fall when they have no chance of germinating. And in the spring when the soil warms up, they'll spring forth and grow in place. The marigolds, the same thing. I'll sprinkle in place or sometimes I'll put them in big containers like a bunch of seeds to spring when the soil warms up in the spring and then I can transplant them and put them wherever I want in the garden whether it's in a pot or in the ground and I do that with the marigolds because they're easy to transplant. You need to know which plants are easy to transplant and which plants will stand a lesser chance of surviving after transplanting. The Johnny Jump Pops are actually very easy to transplant also and so I can either sprinkle them in place or I can sprinkle them in a big pot and leave them to sprout in the spring when the soil warms up and then I can take them and put them in hanging baskets, in planters, whatever I want to do. So my advice to you is if you're considering transplanting um, your flowers, make sure you do your research to see how well it does with being um, transplanted from one area to the next. For the hanging baskets, I do similar. I just crush those babies in the fall when they're dry and leave them in the pots to grow when the soil warms up. You can also take your pots inside and just sprinkle your seeds in the pot and when it gets warm enough, you put them outside. By then, maybe they have started sprouting. These are my Johnny Jump Pops again. These, I basically just crushed them when they were dry in the fall last year. I left them in the pot and they grew in the spring. And by the way, I mentioned about buying plants on sale. You can look for seeds on sale also, but make sure that you check those dates. You don't want to buy those seeds and they're no good, right? You want a good seed that's going to germinate. So guys, there you have it. Those are some of the ways that you can save money 
and ultimately time when it comes on to your potted flowers and hanging baskets in and around your garden. I hope this video helps. Please leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Any questions, go ahead and ask them. Thank you so much for subscribing, for watching the videos, liking, sharing, and commenting because all that help the channel to grow and I appreciate you immensely. Thanks so much for spending the time with me today. If you have watched this video and you have not subscribed, go ahead, hit that subscription button and remember to hit the notification bell icon also so you can be notified of new videos. You take care now and I'll see you in the next video.